What's up, guys? Today, we are going to get into my top six list of best looking and sounding 4K movies of 2023 so far. Why is it the top six? Well, I figured because we're coming in to the half year mark, one for every month, which would be six. So half of the year, 12 months in a year. So I figured I'd make it six instead of 10, and I'd make it six instead of five. So this is going to be the top six 4K movies, not just 4K Blu-rays, but 4K movies in general. So it could include 4K Blu-rays, it could include Kaleidoscape, and it could also include digital streaming as well. And if you guys are concerned about that, just know that if it's a high mark on digital, chances are it's going to be probably better looking on the 4K Blu-ray and also better looking on the Kaleidoscape. And if it's a knockout looking transfer on the Kaleidoscape, Chances are it's going to look equally as good on 4K Blu-ray. I, of course, have not seen every single 4K Blu-ray to come out this year or every single 4K digital streaming movie to come out this year. So this is, of course, going to be my subjective list on what I think is the best looking and sounding movies so far of 2023. Again, this is my subjective list. Your list is likely to be very different than mine. So let's kick this off. We're going to kick this off at number six, Avatar 2, The Way of Water. It was shot in 4K 3D natively, and it's got a 4K DI. I gave this a 9.9 .9 for video and, a, and an 8.1 for audio, which the cumulative score would be a 9. And if we're talking about video quality, maybe the best looking, one of the best looking movies on this list because this is a technological achievement for filmmaking because we are getting the first almost completely cgi 4k 3d movie i was hoping that this technology would push and usher in maybe we would usher in a new wave of 4k 3d television sets or a new kind of format but that does not seem to be the case like it was the first time around but this is such a good looking movie the hdr has been a point of contention for some folks because it's it was not the brightest movie to come out this year so it doesn't have eye searingly bright hdr highlights or the deepest black levels but it is a very solid looking transfer overall the colors are nice very natural yet nicely saturated still has very nice peak highlights uh colors again look wonderful great color palette the blues on the Navi skin. You can see the various shades of blue between the Navi and the and the other water avatars as well, or other water Navi. As far as like detail, I mean the detail is so crispy in certain shots that it really does look like the CG is so good that it looks like it could be actually real skin like real actual aliens in certain shots. Other shots, not so much. Sometimes some of the creatures do kind of tend to look a little bit cartoony, but there's going to be some good and bad, of course. But for, uh, I think the majority of the movie, the resolution is just super crisp, super detailed. And if we could only, if you guys have seen this at the, at the cinemas in 4K 3D, it's even better looking in high frame rate. And of course, when I did the video, I typically don't like to use the motion interpolation or mo motion smoothing, but I think in this case, if you want to kind of replicate what was happening at the cinema, that would be the closest approximation is to turn on your motion smoothing and motion interpolation for Avatar 2, The Way of Water. So you get that extra, you know, non-juddery motion. So knockout transfer, I think it's uh, like the best looking CG movie. And not too far behind would be Avatar 1. I mean, Avatar 1 still holds up very well to Avatar 2. And if we're talking about Atmos, this, I think, is the weakest, actually the weakest for, for audio on my list, which comes in at 8.1. This is a Fox slash Disney Atmos mix, or some of you guys want to call it Atmos mix. You do have to raise the volume a little bit, but I think, I think a lot of these titles, you actually have to raise the volume. A little bit so i knocked it points for that for the low volume and also this is the one movie on the list that's probably the most static out of the mix out of the list 
So the Atmos height effects come on sparingly throughout the movie, just maybe a handful of times do the do we get some real good dynamic movement in this mix. The bass could also use some help as well. But to be fair, this pretty much sounded the exact same way that I heard it at the cinema. So, you know, for like a one-to-one -one translation of what I heard at the cinema to coming to the home mix, pretty much sounded and as, as I expected from what I heard at the cinema. So um, there's still some really good movement on it. There's like, you know, those handful of times where there might be a chopper or something that flies overhead, or there might be a, one of those flying creatures that flies overhead. In the underwater scenes, you get some good movement. Um, but other than that, most of it is relegated to some musical musical extension up top and also the lower bed channels. Get some pretty decent usage as well. So that again, number six, Avatar 2, The Way of Water, 9.9 .9 for video and an 8.1 for audio. Number five is going to be 65. I gave this one an 8.5 for video and a 9.8 for audio, which gives it a cumulative score of 9.15. This was shot in 6K and it's got a 4K DI. So if we're gonna kick this off with video, this has got a great looking transfer. It is pretty crispy at times. The color doesn't have the best color palette. It's not like a colorful movie. It's not like Avatar. So it's pretty muted, darker colors, very crispy in certain shots. Great detail, great black levels. There's definitely some good HDR highlights. You get There's some explosions during the beginning of the movie. And um, the CG is kind of really... I think the CG is probably the weakest part of the movie. Some of the some of the dinos are not the most realistic. They're not quite up to the Jurassic Park levels, but still they worked very well within the context of the movie. So a little bit suspect, but the rest of the stuff was pretty much a knockout, I felt. And then for audio, this is this has got a very dynamic mix. I mean, I gave this one a 9.8 for audio, which I thought was a knockout, Dolby Atmos mix. So there's a lot of movement going on in this. I mean, right from the opening, there's the ship that comes shooting inwards with the debris kind of pinging around the different speakers because it got hit by an asteroid or something like that. So you hear all kinds of like um, little sparks and stuff floating out, floating and hitting the ceiling and the walls and the floor all throughout the uh, interior of the ship. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, little creatures in the background. It's got a very subtle mix and also bombastic mix, mix at the same time. So a really good atmospheric mix. There's certain things where there might be comets and stuff or meteors flying from overhead hitting the planet. Uh, no spoilers. Actually, they spoil it at the beginning of the movie. So you, you'll hear a meteor and stuff like that hitting the Earth and you know flying from overhead. Great base as well, especially when the dinos are running around. And of course, great lower channel activity. You know, like I said, it's pretty atmospheric, so you'll hear like the creatures and stuff in the background. Very much kind of like a, like a quiet place esque mix. Maybe not as subtle, but it's still a very active mix throughout, and very solid bass also. Uh, does it need? Do you need to bump up the bass a little bit? I mean, it could definitely use a little bit of a bump in the bass department, but I thought it was a knockout at most mix. Nine point eight for audio you guys if you guys have missed 65 definitely pick it up man it's a i thought it was an enjoyable movie coming in at number four is dungeons and dragons i gave this an 8.5 for video and ooh, a 9.9 .9 for audio which gives it a cumulative score of a 9.2 this was shot 4.5k and it's also got a 4k di video quality wise this is a fairly i mean this is a touch of softness if I remember correctly, it touches softness to the transfer, but then there's the HDR has a great looking color palette. It's very natural. I mean, a lot of the stuff happens, you know, in the exterior. So you get a lot of greens, earthy tones with the trees and the, um, the skies are very nice and blue. Um, some good HDR specular highlights, you know, you got dragons and flames, of course. So there are some eye squinting moments as well. Some of the CG kind of works here and there. I think it does work for the most part. Um, I don't think I really knocked it for the CG, but I really did like the CG. A couple of really good uh, cameos in there as well. So solid, uh, solid resolution, not the best. It's, it's got a mixture of, you know, 4K crispiness and also softness. So that's why I gave it an 
uh but 9.9 .9 for audio this has got a dolby atmos mix that's very active from start to finish i mean there's so many good parts in this i mean there's the part where chris pine and Anna Lucia jumps off of the the castle tower with the bird guy. I don't know any of the characters' names in this, any of the creatures' names, but they uh, they kind of fall off the tower. You can hear them kind of flying overhead, zipping from the front to the back. Um, there's some really good mo moments in this, especially with the the red wizard. I think it's the red wizard when they're using the spell when they're in the little circle there towards the end of the movie. Um, just a great mix overall. The bass rocks as well. I felt the bass was pretty good. And um, great lower channel activity. A lot of a lot of really good scenes in this, especially the the escape when the girl turns into the bird and she jumps out of the window. That's also a really good Atmos demo scene as well, which I really liked. Um, so that's a nine point nine, very very active mix. One of the surprises I think for me this year, like I don't know anything about Dungeons and Dragons, but this was a maybe one of the, my favorite movies to come out this year and then coming in at number three which fan favorite john wick chapter four this one i had originally reviewed the digital but i did see the 4k blu-ray i did not review the 4k blu-ray yet but if i was going to give the 4k blu-ray a rating this does jump up uh i would say almost significantly from my digital review this gets a 9.4 for video and then a 9.1 for audio for a cumulative score of a 9.25. It was shot 4.5K and it's got a 4K DI. I mean, this is a John Wick movie. It's got a specific color palette to it. The HDR, of course, such a knockout HDR, right? I mean, it's got very bright specular highlights, deep, deep dark blacks to the point where it could be crushing some detail. But that's okay. It's a very dark movie. Um, it's not a very bright movie. Most of the stuff happens at night. But you do get those very vibrant, rich, kind of neon colors. Uh, skin tones have a very nice, deep vibrancy to them. Black levels are crazy deep. Again, specular highlights, fantastic. It's a crisp-looking movie as well. If you want to see all the pores and wrinkles, if you want to count John Wick's strands of hair on his on his uh, greasy head you can do that as well if you want to count his goatee it's there great looking transfer audio wise i did give this a 9.1 i think i originally gave it an 8.5 or an 8.6 for the digital stream because i felt like the bass was really lacking especially coming from the theatr from the cinema presentation but watching the 4k blu-ray what a dra this is quite a drastic difference especially in that opening when he was punching the 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 block of wood there um at the theaters that beginning those bass thumps every time he was throwing those punches that was it was like popping the subwoofer at the front of my theater like right behind the screen i could hear the subwoofer popping every time he would do that and then also the subwoofers that were working i could feel the entire theater floor shaking it, it was that strong and then when i reviewed the digital it was so subdued i was i was really surprised it, it was lacking that much bass and i even bumped up the bass i think about three or four db just to kind of get it back and it was still kind of lacking so i didn't really want to go up like 12 db to get it there but in comparing it to the 4k blu-ray all of that was definitely present it was definitely a lot stronger than the digital stream so i mean this is one of those cases where yes the lossless track does make quite a difference if you're coming from the digital stream so i would give so i gave it a what i give it i gave it a 9.1 um there's some pretty good lower channel activity it's not the most active height wise as you might expect i mean there's not too much going on in this movie in the high channels um you get some pretty good musical extension up top and um like i said i think the big the, the big knockout feature is the bass um, I didn't give it like a 9.9 .9 or a 10, obviously, because it could use more Atmos height effects. I mean, I think there were some scenes with rain where John Wick 1, you know, those rainy scenes in John Wick 1 sounded really great. There's actually employed the height channels where, as in John Wick Chapter 4, there was like nothing. Those rainy scenes on the exterior shots, there was like nothing happening in those shots there. Um, very surprisingly, because the other ones were so good sounding. 
So I definitely knocked it for that. I also knocked it just because I know a lot of you guys love these John Wick movies, but I, I felt like it became a little bit relentless in its machine gunnery and shoot 'em ups for like the two and a half, almost three hours or so. I felt like it, it just got a little bit overbearing for me personally. But uh, of course, just the biggest lack of Atmos side effects is there as well. The music sounded great, so I give it some points for that. Moving into number two, I don't know if this movie is going to be on anybody's list, but number two is Evil Dead Rise. I gave this an 8.9 for video and then a 9.9 for audio. This was shot in 4.5K. It's also got a 4K DI. But this one, uh, this one I reviewed on digital because I do not believe the 4K Blu-ray is out at the time of this video. As far as the digital stream goes, I mean, this is pretty much a knockout. If this comes on digital, I mean, this comes out on 4K Blu-ray, I'm sure it's going to be like amazing looking and even better sounding. This might be a 10 for uh, for audio, uh, but 8.9. And it's one of the crispiest movies on this list for sure. I think the only the only reason why I kind of knocked it, I didn't bump it into the nines because it is such a dark, dark movie. Plus, it was a digital stream. So there possibly could be some better detail in those black levels. I mean, if you guys have picked this up on the Cloud Escape, you guys would know for sure. But I felt like it was so dark. Obviously, it was kind of crushing detail in parts, I felt, or it was just a bit murky. Other than that, I mean, not the most colorful movie. It's still got some really great HDR. HDR for those black levels looked great. Um, like I said, it was really dark. Uh, for what specular highlights there are, maybe from some interior lights, some flashing here and there, light bulbs, candles, stuff like that, which really illuminate the scene. That looked great. Reds looked great. There's a pretty good looking natural color palette during the start of the movie where the stuff take place, where the scenes take place outside by the, I think by the river where the, uh, where the guys are swimming. And I mean, those scenes look great. Again, kind of a muted, natural, muted color palette. So nothing really vibrant except for like the, the reds and the skin tones, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not going to blow you away. Definitely not going to blow you away for color. Uh, but decent HDR, I'm sure it probably would look better on physical media or the cloud escape but it is very crisp for sure very sharp detailed crisp movie and then the audio again another very very um active atmos mix this again goes along with you know like a quiet place type of mix i would also put it maybe in the same categories uh 65 where i feel like atmos mixes immersive audio mixes really lend themselves to these horror movies because you can create a lot of creepy atmospheric effects just just little like light bulbs or washing machines going off in the background in the interior shots of the apartment um just people kind of running around in the background um on the front stage there's, there's the part where the mother is looking in from the little little eye hole from from the little door um you can hear people kind of running around outside where she's chasing them, a little bit creepy. Um, just, just little subtle effects in the background, which really work, really work well with these horror movies. And then when the action does kind of ramp up, you get those big pops of uh, loud, you know, scary, like th those jump scare moments that really sound excellent as well, which really engage the subwoofer. Uh, and this is for a digital stream. And it's a very, very atmospheric, creepy, solid mix. I mean, this is a 9.9. For digital stream i would only imagine that the 4k blu-ray would probably be a 10. is that on your list for number two is evil dead rise even on your list definitely leave a comment down below and then kicking off at number one is is going to be black adam i know it's everyone's favorite movie this year right i gave this one a 9.8 for video and a 9.7 for audio it was shot with in 4.5k and it's got a 4k di this, of course, is a pretty crispy movie as well. It's got some blazingly hot HDR. It's, it can be crispy. It can be a little soft at times. Kind of has that little Zack Snyder-y look to it. Kind of a darker, muted color palette. Um, but the HDR just blazes on the television set. And I thought it was a knockout 
Uh, again, it does have like the same look as you would get from like a Snyder-esque movie. So a lot of inspiration from that. So very, very deep, dark blacks. HDR really makes the color palette pop. I mean, the desert scenes look fantastic. The, the specular highlights, the reds, the flames, eye searingly bright. If you want an HDR movie that's going to require you to get some sunglasses, this movie is definitely it. I would say, is it nearly as bright as Mario Brothers? I think it's pretty close. But one of the brightest movies on this list, I think. And then, um, like I said, the detail looks great. Um, I, believe, I believe it's got a little bit of grain to it. You know, if you're a grain hater, you might not like the look of it. Again, subjective thing. Uh, 9.7 for audio. This has a very active Atmos mix as well. I mean, there's just tons of action in it. It's also another kind of really bombastic mix few quiet parts thrown in as well i thought it was more engaging than say a john wick where it's just kind of just a one note gunshot every five seconds type of mix this one you actually have some really good solid movement from front to back some aerial stuff that goes on so the high channels do get engaged quite a bit you know thunder lightning and all that stuff like that just here in the high channels uh rock and score as well i don't know who did the score but the the score sounded fantastic in this movie. Fortunately, the movie, you know, doesn't live up to the audio and video score, but I thought it was still uh, an enjoyable movie in the DCU or DCEU. Not the best in the DCU, EU, probably near the bottom, but it was still overall. I thought it was a pretty enjoyable movie and just looked and sounded great. And then I, have, I do have one honorable mention. Honorable mention would have to be Knock at the Cabin. I gave this one an 8.2 and an 8.7. This is the only movie that was shot on 35 millimeter and it's got a 4K DI. So 8.2, this is not a movie that you would probably think of being, you know, uh, a standout visual feast because a lot of folks do like that 4K crispiness, the extra sharp, ultra detailed look in 4K. But this was shot on 35 millimeters, so it does have uh, somewhat soft, 35 millimeter grainy feel to it, um, which I think looks fantastic. So I gave it an 8.2. It's got, it's, it's got some really solid HDR. The whites, I, I feel like the whites might lean a little hot, but I think that's kind of like the visual aesthetic he's going for here. Black levels look great. Most of the stuff happens in the cabin, on the exterior. And uh, it can be pretty crispy at times, but it does have that very, really filmic look to it. So, um, and the colors, like I said, HDR looks great on it. 8.7 for the Dolby Atmos mix. This again, right from the beginning of the movie, this is a very active Atmos mix as well. I mean, there's some great exterior atmospheric effects. Just, you know, if you can picture yourself sitting outside in the forest, you get all the creature little insect sounds just like a quiet place again subtle mix but very engaging engages all the high channels gauges all the lower channel activities the speech sounded great i mean it's a very dialogue heavy movie of course uh because there's not too much action in it but just the atmospherics in this movie works great and then there's there's a little bit of action towards the end like the planes and stuff towards the third act from what is there like i said it's a very very subtle mix and i think it's a it's a standout mix so 8.7 8.7 for Atmos. But that's it, man. That is it. That is my top six list of 2023 so far. My top 4K movies, which includes Cloud Escape, 4K Blu-rays, and digital. Now, if you guys want to pick up anything on this list, I will leave some links for it down below in this video's description. This is my subjective list. What is on your list? Leave your comments down below. Let me know your list. And... What would you add or subtract to my list? Are you agreeing with anything on this list? Am I missing something? Leave it down below in the comments. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.